crazy was that? Um, don't cut your fingers. Go right ahead and get in it with the next one. <laughs> Lumpia tonight. And as you can see, that is plenty more than a half a cup's worth. We're just going to pack some in there, right? Half a cup. We're going to put it in our bowl. Ding, done. Now, remember the scoop feature I talked about? Let's get this extra carrot. You can save it for your next batch or you can just batch it. That carrot has been dispatched. Like so. Alright, now the cabbage. If you've ever made coleslaw, you've probably done this. I like that outer leaf there, it kind of protects your hand from cutting it. Just cutting yourself when you get down to the last part. It makes a little bit of a mess, but hey, we're really cooking here, right? Okay, look how quick and easy that was. Get rid of that. We'll grab a handful, stick it in our cup, our half cup measuring device, packed. Hey, right, there's a half a cup of uh, lettuce, just like that. Again, just take our scooper, clean it up a little bit, so we get the big pieces out mainly. And, uh, Save for a later use. <laughs> Whoever does that. All right, that's done. Then we come to the garlic. <coughs> Excuse me. And I've already cut off the uh, little brown ends of the garlic. You know, nobody wants to eat that, right? And we're just going to start pressing it through. We're going to cut off with a knife. And get that down in there and you'll get little pieces of you know not skin so much but just garlic that really didn't press just keep that on the bottom and force it through with the next one and run that through get that little it looks like skins get that down in the bottom next one just keep going and get all that nice delicious garlic in there this is one of the ingredients that uh that I think really makes this dish or this uh, recipe shine. Okay, it doesn't take long. If you don't have a garlic press, you should get one if you if you use you know a lot of garlic. And go ahead and invest in a good one. It'll last you the rest of your life. And every time you use it, you're gonna you know you're just gonna feel good about having a good tool to. Uh, to use in your kitchen so uh, anytime you can do a little something or you know do a little bit more to make yourself feel good about yourself and your cooking then why not right yeah. uh, or drop a hint to somebody that you'd like to have one for your birthday or Valentine's Day or Christmas or whatever all right so there's basically uh, a bulb of garlic uh, yeah and I'll just go ahead and Toss those pieces in like that, and there is, get in there, there's the garlic, and into the sink that goes. Now, last but not on purpose, well, almost last, is the onion, and I save this for last because when you shred an onion, it's going to make uh, quite a bit of juice, and that's going to get on your cutting board, and we don't like to cry. We don't like messing with onions so much. So why not just save that till last and spare yourself the grief, right? Okay, so we've cleaned up the big pieces out of there. We're gonna take our onion. We're gonna shred that big boy. <laughs> Lupia. And we'll just get that going. You can see down in your box shredder, you can kind of see how it's kind of long, you know, so you kind of have an idea when to stop. And, um, you know, like I said, the onion, 
it's going to release a lot of liquid when you sh when you shred it like this instead of uh, chopping it. And you know that juice and that liquid that it that it releases is going to get mixed well into your mixture when you when you put all these things together. And you know, so how cool is that? That um, you know you can distribute that flavor more easily just because you shredded it instead of chopping it. So again, we're going to take our multitasking knife here. We're going to scoop some of that up. See all that liquid? Can you can you tell that juice there? And not quite a half a cup yet. There's some more bigger pieces. And it's there, right? And we're going to get that in. And we're going to, oh, and another piece of hardware you need to dish out to uh, clean up with a little bit. All right, so let's take our fork that we've, we've already beat our egg, but we cleaned our forks. We're going to use it again here just to mix these things together and, you know, get the, all these uh, veggies incorporated, spread around together. And, you know, they talk about smell of vision. <laughs> it smells pretty good, especially with all that nice garlic in there. So just get those mixed up a little bit. Now take your uh, soy sauce and about two tablespoons. Doesn't have to be exact. I'll, and I do like to shake it up just a. And we're going to go one tablespoon, two tablespoons, and. We'll stir that all together and you can see how it starts turning dark and so you kind of know then once it's mixed up real good because you should have a uniform color um, throughout you know this this part of the ingredients you can use a spatula if you like but the fork it doesn't take long and as you can see it's all coming together nice Again, the soy sauce gives the salt component. I don't use any pepper. You can if you like, but you know, you can you can play around with it and make it your own. Okay, so there's that. And now we're going to take the ground pork that we talked about. And this pork is almost at room temperature. It's not refrigerated cold. You don't want it so stiff that you can't do anything with it. If you want, you can break it off in pieces and kind of do that if that's how you do it, whatever your thing is. Um, before you start, you know, mixing these part together. Um, I'll go ahead and try to just do that quickly. Because you're going to have to break it up anyway, right? As for, you know, get things mixed in. And so we'll do this just real quick. Doesn't matter, just tear it apart into chunks. Get it in there. Right? And then just get in there with your hands and start mixing it together and get all those veggies and that pork and everything mixed together in a nice and it's okay if it's mushy because hey we're going to roll this we don't want we're not rolling chunks here the, one of the secrets you know to this recipe is to you know have everything that's so when you're making that nice small uh, size lumpia that you know it's going to cooperate in that inside that egg roll uh, or that uh, egg wrapper. So once you get this done, and I believe we're about there, we have everything is mixed together well now. The meat, the veggies. Um, let me get this off my hands. And this is the point where if you want to use the, um, uh, add some sesame oil, this is the time to do it. Now, again, be very careful with this. Use it sparingly. It looks like I'm going to use a lot, but we got a pound of meat here with a lot of veg. And so I'm just going to get some sesame oil in there. Go ahead and mix that in as well. I'll have to wash my hands again, but I didn't want my porky hands touching the uh, sesame oil bottle, right? That's not smart. And I can smell it just by what I did right there. So I hope I didn't overdo it. 
that's about what I you know used last time. And there is our lumpia mixture. Ready to uh, ready to marinate, and <clears throat> so we are going to just clean off the edge of that bowl a little bit, so the saran wrap will stick to it, right? And we'll get this in the fridge. We'll let it. Uh, here's what it looks like, folks. Okay, we're going to get that in the fridge and let that uh, marinate for about an hour. And after an hour, or overnight, whatever your preference is. Well, oh, here's a trick about uh, saran wrap. When you pull the wrap away from the box, how it always sticks to itself, tear it about halfway, then grab it again. And instead of tearing the wrap away from the box, take the box away from the wrap. Okay, um, and we're gonna cover that so it doesn't dry out, especially if it's going to be sitting overnight. We'll get this in the fridge, and when we come back, we're going to wrap our lumpia.